Hi, this is Trey with ENS Equipment, and today we're going to remove a engine from a Toro Dingo wheeled unit. This engine is done and needs a new one. Also, give us a call if you need any parts for your Toro Dingo, 703-919-5291. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get your lift arms up in the air to make easy access from the front of your engine. And then you're going to want to make sure that you put your safety arms in so that the dingo arms don't come down on their own um, hurt anybody or crush anybody the second step that you're going to do is you're going to remove your battery your battery usually sits in this compartment right here near the housing pump i've already removed ours then you're going to come in and on your front hydraulic pump let me get the light here there's four hydraulic lines that come off this pump. You're going to remove all four of the lines. These black ones here are held on with a metal band. Just go ahead and disconnect those and pry those away. And the two over here are um, removed. I believe it's an inch and an eighth wrench. Just remove those. A little bit of hydraulic oil is going to come out. So you might want to get some paper towels to collect that. Next step you're going to do is drain your oil. Your oil drain is to the rear of the machine. Let's see if the light gets it. Down here is your oil drain. What you're gonna do is you're gonna twist it, pull it out a little bit, and your oil will come out. So we have already drained this, uh, this engine right here so what we do next is we close our fuel valves this machine has two fuel tanks so two fuel valves so if you take this fuel valve right here and you turn it to the closed position that one and that one that stops the uh, uh, fuel flow to the engine and then go ahead and disconnect your fuel line from uh, your fuel filter right here Next thing we do is disconnect the electric. Um, you're gonna have a couple lines coming off your engine starter and most of your other electric lines to the right of the machine. You have this bus right here. Hard to see, but this bus right here that you will have to uh, remove from your engine. And usually your ground is down here actually on the engine you can go ahead and remove that too so you do those three things and your um there's a couple wires uh, that are coming off your starter that need to be removed as well do next is remove the top air filter uh from up here we have a canister air filter on this one some of them you don't need to remove because it's not a canister air filter so we take that off, uh, disconnect it from the holder and the top of the carburetor. And then I also remove uh, the holder as well to make removing the engine easier. Uh, just one less thing to get in the way. Then you come to the top and we are throttle and cable lines, which are here and here, are usually tied up here in this linkage right here. Uh, best thing to do is snap a picture before you remove them so you know exactly how they go back in and then go ahead and remove those from your engine and then we come down here and this has a counterweight on it that we've already removed here's the counterweight it's just got a pin in the back that you knock up out of the way and then remove the counterweight and the last thing to do before we pull the engine is on this engine plate right here it has four bolts one there's another one on this side and then two directly on the other side they usually thread into the red frame here um usually they don't use a nut some of them do but most of them don't so you'll have to see if yours has a nut or not just go ahead and remove those bolts and then what we're going to do is remove the entire engine with the muffler and the pump out and go ahead and start installing the parts on the new engine all right so we got the engine out the old one and we got the new engine in and so now what we're going to do is we're going to swap out the parts that need to go in the old engine to the new like the muffler and the pump so the first thing i do is on the new engine as you can see i've already done a little bit of the work 
on the new engine, or actually on the old engine first, you're gonna find where the drain plug is for the oil drain, and you're gonna unscrew it out of the engine. On the same side of the new engine, you're gonna find a bolt in that place where that um, drain goes. Go ahead and take that uh, plug out, that bolt, and you're gonna replace it with the oil drain. You're gonna install the oil drain in that port and screw it in. Uh, we use a liquid gasket uh, before we install it to prevent any kind of oil leakage from seeping out between the, uh, the metal parts. Once you got that, um, go ahead and remove the muffler from the old engine. You're gonna have your four nuts that are on the studs that actually hold it on. And in this particular engine, it's gonna have two bolts down here in this side too um, that need to be removed and then you pull the actual inside muffler uh, with the heat shield out and off then you're going to remove the pump and the housing off the old engine okay there's the old engine i've already taken it off and installed it on the new engine uh, the easiest way to do it is go ahead there's four bolts one two and then two below on the same kind of hub, on the same hub. You're gonna remove those and then come in to where the actual uh, coupler meets the crankshaft engine and you're gonna see uh, there's actually four square bolts that are actually in there. You're gonna find the two square bolts that are closest to the engine and you're going to loosen those up. That's what holds the keyway uh, onto the shaft and prevents uh, prevents the keyway from slipping. The easiest way to do it is to find a quarter inch long uh, ratchet head like this. And what I do is the part that hooks up to the ratchet, it's actually a perfect fit for the top of this bolt right here. So you kind of hook it like this, find an Allen wrench that fits the business end of this um, ratchet head, and then go ahead and unscrew. And then after you get both of those loosened and all four of these bolts off, then go ahead and pry the entire pump and housing off the crankshaft. You're going to have to reuse the keyway from your old engine to your new engine. So after this is totally off, take the keyway off the old engine, um, install it in the, the old keyway on the new engine, make sure it's clean and free from any oil. And that includes the crankshaft. Once you got that, go ahead and slide this whole piece back onto your new engine. After you got it in there pretty good, go ahead and tighten these bolts. Make sure that this part isn't bound. It's not like, got like a, looking like this or anything like that. Just kind of make sure that it's in the right position. And then you go ahead and lock these two um, square bolts back down on the crankshaft. Make sure that the bolt that's supposed to be on the keyway is on the keyway. The keyway is much shorter than the slot on the crankshaft so it can move in and out. Just make sure that bolt is actually on that keyway. Um, after that, put these four bolts back in. One, two, three, four, tighten them down. Um, and then after that, go ahead and put your muffler on. Same way you took it off. And uh, I forgot to say, you also have to take your plate off your old engine, the plate's sitting right there, I've already done it. And then install that plate on your new engine. Make sure that the plate goes on the same way. It's only one way it can go on. Put it in the wrong way, your engine's not gonna fit correctly. So do that, do that, tighten everything down. And at this point, if your gasket is set up on your oil drain, you can actually fill it up with oil. It's not gonna leak. Um, after that, we are ready to put this new engine back into the Dingo. All right, we, had, we went ahead and uh, slid the new engine in. First thing I do is come down and hook the engine plate back into the frame of the Dingo. You're gonna have these bolts right here. There's four of them, two on this side, two on the other. I use Loctite to lock them down for extra security. Went ahead and put this plate back on, this counterweight, and then drove the pin right here in to secure it. Hook up your fuel over here, your fuel line to your new fuel filter, and open up your two valves, one there, one there to allow fuel back into your system hook up your throttle and your cable or choke and your throttle cable there lock them down don't lock them too hard that the actual cable uh, won't go in and out 
but you want to lock it in secure enough that the cable doesn't move back and forth. Um, hook up your air filter system, go ahead with your bracket, and then your air filter housing back to your engine with that clamp right there. Go ahead and secure it. But I put two air filter or new air filters in here because it's a new engine. No need to run dirty air filters on a new engine. And make sure that this cap is pointed down. Uh, you don't want rain and stuff getting into your engine. Uh, hook up your electrical. There's a ground right here. Somebody's come in and rewired this thing. Wasn't me. But there's one ground right there. And you're probably going to see two grounds coming right there on your machine. One goes to your cable, one comes out of your end, or one goes to your battery, and one comes to your engine. Um, so go ahead and put your, hook your negatives up. There's a bus right there that needs to be plugged in on the back side of this, uh, coming from your existing um, electrical from, on your dingo side that needs to hook up here that goes into your engine. I think that's it on this side. <clears throat> Over here, you look down there, Right here is where your starter is. Okay, I'm touching the nut that um, you're gonna have to put your positive battery cable on, hook up, and then there's also another wire from your bus that you're gonna have to um, install on the same nut, just the same way you took it off. Hook up your pump, hook up these two lines, secure them with the clamps, and then put these uh, two hydraulic lines back on and torque them down. Pretty sure that's it on this side. You're gonna, of course, the last thing you're gonna do, or one of the last things you're gonna do is hook up your battery. And the most important thing is put new engine oil into your engine. Don't wanna start without engine oil. So go ahead and fill it up. This one uses 10W30. Uh, gas engine oil uses about two quarts. So go ahead and do that. After that, start your machine. Make sure everything works. Turn it off. Uh, let it sit for five, 10 minutes, recheck the oil level, and then add if you need to, and then check your hydraulic fluid level, make sure that that's on, uh, that's on the level too. After that, you're good to go, and you wanna change your oil and oil filter on this engine uh, after the first 50 hours for your break-in oil, and after that, every 100 hours. Thank you very much. If you need parts, 703-919-5291. We ship all over the United States. Thank you.